All right, we are now joined by former SABC editor and uh, journalist, uh, Mr. Ntlagani Pozulu, to talk to us uh, more on this. And might I add, my former boss, in fact, a very good afternoon to you, sir. Nice to see you. Good afternoon, Flo, and how are you doing? And uh, also good afternoon to your listeners. You're most welcome. You know, I've, I've been watching uh, the media reports and uh, broadcasts and, you know, around uh, uh, the king. And, and as a former jo journalist, but more importantly, as a Zulu man yourself, um, you might appreciate the fact that there are questions being asked about Zulu culture and people wanting to know more. But one also then on the back of that needs to ask the question of, you know, why now? Why does it only take, uh, you know, the passing of a king, of the king, uh, for there to be so much interest around cultures that we should actually have known about long before as, as South Africans. I mean, what has been uh, your view, just in terms of how it has been broadcast, but also um, the reaction from South Africans in general? Well, firstly, I would say it's an end of an era, even though uh, there should be continuation in what uh, the king was actually doing. But uh, each and every era has got its own challenges. And uh, if you look at the reign of King Shaga, the most important thing for him was to build the Zulu nation. Hence, uh, quite a number of wars were fought during his era. As a result, some of the cultural practices uh, became neglected, not intentionally but because of the task at hand at the time mm -hmm. so the different kings uh, experienced different things and after shaga uh, king dingani uh, fought his wars uh, it is only king pande who actually uh, had a lull in terms of uh, the wars but uh, getting to a level of reviving uh, the moral and social fiber of the nation after so many years of trials and, tri and tribulation emerging from apartheid to a level whereby uh, you had a young man coming in who was asking himself, what should I do for these people to keep cementing the nation? Yeah. And as a result, he started uh, some of the, he started the revival of cult different uh, cultures and you would understand that uh, culture is a u has got a unifying uh, factor yeah. and he is being hailed as a repository of cultural uh, heritage and, and, and tradition as a result of which uh, he actually had three most important pillars uh, which he built his reign on and that is cultural heritage and tradition and then peace uh, and then development but i think where he actually uh, where he actually proved himself more mm. was on reviving culture secondly uh, the peace initiatives that he started uh, the changing changing societies are also have challenges in terms of uh, culture, cul I mean, social cohesion, and that is the main problem that he had to deal with and development to take place because there would be no development if there is conflict uh, in a country. And you would know that uh, in this province, more than 20,000 people died as a result of uh, violence, which is was a problem. And he had to prevail on different structures to say, hold it, uh, it's not going to happen that way. And, and, and that's and my next even question, Mr. Zulu. During this period, uh, he. Yeah, that's, that's my next question. You know, uh, Come again? My next question was actually yes. about the issue of peace. I mean, this is really what I've, I've heard throughout um, by those who have uh, described him. We even heard President Cyril Ramaphosa uh, saying the very same thing. And I wonder if he has left that legacy and, and the, so much about, being, uh, about peace uh, that even going forward when he's no longer here, that it will be something that is paramount to the kingdom going forward, that whoever uh, takes over from this point understands that this is what um, uh, the, the king wanted and that peace is something that is 
is essential uh, to to the Zulu Kingdom, and and and, and I, I wonder if that is a key element, you know, because you, you you'd not want a situation where you later have a king who peace is not something that's important um, to 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 the king. I mean, what, what are your thoughts in terms of going forward as as the Zulu Kingdom? Well, whosoever uh, takes the throne uh, would know and understand that the absence of peace uh, breeds chaos, breeds underdevelopment, mm. and breeds disintegration of the things that hold the nation and bound the nation together. So it is quite clear that uh, whosoever takes over uh, would, would have gained this understanding uh, clearly because when you actually look at it even at this day and day in point when people talk about uh, violence uh, and lack of peace they are looking at party conflicts uh, whereas there are intra-party conflicts that we're experiencing and people eliminating each other yeah. and even at that point uh, he made it his task to actually preach the, the whole issue of peace. Yeah. Taxi violence is another uh, area where he presided and actually called taxi operators and taxi bosses to say, this is your business. Uh, you can't actually make profit if you are actually fighting amongst yourself. Mm -hmm. So the new king would have to understand that and i think being born in an environment where peace is spoken about yeah surely he will have assimilated that sort of culture yeah and 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 you know i'd also like to talk about the proceedings going forward at uh, this time just on the back of my first question around uh, culture what then happens from this point you know we've had the okojalwa ceremony which, ha which happened at midnight now we've had the memorial uh, uh, today can you paint a picture for us as to traditionally what you expect uh, uh, going forward what's to be done from this point uh, onwards I think uh, there is one thing that we also need to understand, that uh, the king is transcending from uh, different uh, eras, the 19th century, the 20th, and the 21st. Yeah. And it is for the first time that a Zulu monarch, when he passes on, he leaves behind a will. So that will uh, is holding us uh, at ransom because we are all thinking what is it going to be uh, are we going to experience the announcement after the will had been read uh, of a new uh, king or heir to the throne so that is one aspect but the appointment or the of, of, of a king is a very intense uh, process whereby members of the royal family and the mother will also determine uh, who the king is, given the birth lineage and so forth. Yeah. So it is a very intense purpose. But uh, I doubt if uh, such an announcement will be made today, because there are still quite a lot of cultural uh, rituals and passage that we have to go through. And ordinarily, when the king uh, was installed uh, as, a, as a king, it took about three years after his father had passed on King Cyprian Gapeguzu. Yeah. So it would be history in the making if a day after he had been uh, planted, you have the appointment and the announcement of the next king. All right, uh, Bob Zulu, we appreciate your time. Uh, thank you so much uh, for being uh, with us here on uh, SABC News. Thanks a lot, Bob Zulu. Thank you very much.